So we're looking at our final little extracts from the concluding moments in the play, Act 5, Scene 7 and Scene 8. The first one is concerns Macduff's pledge of vengeance and the circularity of the story that we see in this moment in the text. It gives the plot a circular structure because Macduff is seen here fighting the same mercenaries, the soldiers who are kind of paid to fight for their loyalty. That Macbeth is, is described as defeating in Act 1, Scene 2, you know, when he um, his sword smokes with bloody execution and with all the blood of the traitors that he's hacked his way through to get to the treacherous previous Dane of Cawdor. Well, Macduff now occupies Macbeth's role in all of this. He's fulfilling Macbeth's previous role. And he opens these lines saying, that way the noise is. He's talking about the noise of the battle. He's talking here to Macbeth. Tyrant, show thy face. He wants to kill Macbeth here face to face. He doesn't want to give someone else the chance to do it for him. He says this, if thou beest slain with no stroke of mine, he means if you are killed with no action of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. He will be haunted by his guilt about the death of his family unless he gains revenge for the murder of them, unless he personally kills Macbeth. He will be haunted by their ghosts forever. He then says, I cannot strike at wretched kerns, at lightly armed soldiers. And he's talking here, the mercenaries who are fighting for him, for Macbeth, whose arms are hired to bear their staves, whose arms are being paid for to, to wield their weapons. And then he finishes with this, either thou, Macbeth, or else my sword with an unbattered edge, a sheath again, undeeded. He says, he, either you, Macbeth, or I will put my sword away with its unbattered edge as if it won't have hit anything. I will resheath it again unused. I'm not killing anyone unless it's him. So his exclusive focus here is the killing of Macbeth. He's set directly on the killing of Macbeth to avenge this sense of guilt. And this is the moment in Act 5, Scene 8, when the prophecy is fulfilled and Macbeth and Macduff finally meet. Macbeth starts this with this false sense of confidence. He says, thou losest labor. You're losing effort and energy by trying to fight me. As easy mayest thou the entrenchant air with thy keen sword and press as make me bleed. He's being sarcastic here. As easy may you the impenetrable air with, the, with your sword mark as make me bleed. As in you will find it as difficult to mark me with your sword as you would to poke a hole in the air. It's impossible. He believes himself to be invincible because of the prophecy. You know, he will be harmed by no one of woman born. So then he says, let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests, on vulnerable bodies. I bear a charmed life. I am protected by charms, which must not yield to one of woman born. And this is the moment at which the final component of the prophecy is revealed. He's not, he thinks he's indestructible because of this prophecy, because he thinks Macduff is one of women born. Macduff says them, despair thy charm and let the angel, the governing spirit, he imagines, who, who thou still hast served, tell thee, let the person who's in charge of your life let you know, Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. And so here he's the description of his of him being born prematurely by cesarean, you know, by having the womb cut open and pulled out rather than by birth, natural birth. And here Macbeth realizes, Accursed be that tongue that tells me so. You, whoever speaks this is cursed, for it hath cowled my better part of man. It's depressed the best part of me, which he means is his bravery. And be these juggling fiends no more believed. And he's talking here to, about the witches. Juggling fiends, he means the tricking witches. And be these juggling fiends no more believed that polter us with us in a double sense. That trick us with ambiguity. The double sense of their words. That keep the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope. They keep what we want to hear close to our ear so that we hear something favourable. But then they break it, actually, when we 
when the reality is dawns upon us. They break it to our hope. And then he just says, I will not fight with thee. And this is his first refusal of violence in the whole play. His first time here of turning this down because he realizes, finally, that the prophecy is stacked against him. And this is the moment before his head is hacked off by Macduff. 